Greetings. I am happy to have a chance to talk to you about your child. How is he? Fine. Thank you. You know he is deaf. It was discovered at the hospital and the audiologists have confirmed it. I am worried and need some direction. I am anxious to speak with you about what can be done and how this school may help him. I see. How old is he now? He is four months old. Does he have any other medical problems? No. He is a beautiful baby boy and he cannot hear. The audiologist and the doctor said hearing aids will not be enough for him to learn to speak. She said he may learn to speak if he has a cochlear implant followed by listening and spoken language family-focused intervention. I see. That is just what I would expect them to say. Do you want him to learn to speak or to communicate using sign language? I want him to speak like me if it possible. I am his mother. You need to know that even if he cannot hear he can be a happy normal child. You and he will learn to sign and he can come to school here. Look out the window into the playground. Do any of the children out there look unhappy? He will be just fine, and so will you. It will make me feel good to know there is a way out of this. He is so young and I don't like the idea of surgery. I assume you are telling me this because cochlear implants do not work and coming here instead is the best option for him and our family? It is important to consider your child's cognitive development. If you have an invasive operation near your child's brain at one year of age to place an implant his access to language will not start to develop until after. By learning to sign now you can jump start his cognitive development. So if I learn to sign in the next few months and work with him his cognitive development will be jump started and he will do better in school than if he learns to speak with an implant. He will be like other deaf children and part of the deaf community. I want my child to be like me. Do the implants and listening and spoken language intervention and education work? Let me tell you this. We have experience with implants here at the deaf school. Many of the kids here with implants don't even use them. They don't speak well either. Do implants and listening and spoken language intervention work or not? They are experimental. This is so confusing. I have heard from different people that implants will probably work really well for my son if he has the appropriate listening and spoken language intervention and that having an implant at one year of age he may be able to go to a typical neighborhood school. You make it sound like that would be a mistake. I spoke to the parents of a couple of babies who had the implant surgery and they said the actual surgery was harder on them than on the babies. I am in a very tough and vulnerable position here in looking to you and the audiologist and my doctor for help. Do you people even know each other? Oh yes. We work very closely together. I'm just confused. I am a mother. I want my child to speak to me and listen to my stories. It may indeed be true that he can be happy if he stays deaf like the other good children here. But I'm very confused. Why are you asking me what I want for my son? What is this signing or speech decision all about? What do you think a mother of a deaf baby wants? I want him to talk. Can this school help me with that? We do have a speech therapist on staff. Are you avoiding my question? I'm just trying to figure out what's best for my son. He will hear talking all around him along with his signing in some classes. You aren't really answering my questions. Do you have an interest in having him here and having him sign? Almost everyone who comes in here is very pleased and grateful for our help and advice. I came for help and now I'm thinking I might have walked into a sales pitch. I don't mind questioning authority. I am a paralegal and know my rights. I bet most people who walk in here have no idea what they are in for and don't ask enough questions or investigate if you have your own reasons for suggesting signing instead of implants. You try to convince them your treatment is the only one that works. I went into this field to help people. I'm sure you did, but isn't keeping up to date part of helping people? Yes. Of course it is. I am sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. It's difficult for me. I simply want the best for my son. I want him to be a full member of our family. I am sorry too. Perhaps there is some truth in what you are saying. I really am trying to help. I am a good person you know.
Can I honestly ask you then what the big problem here is? It is very complicated. May I call you Sarah? Yes, Mary. Mary is my mother's name. I could use a friend right now. Help me to understand this signing versus speaking conversation. When I went into graduate school a few decades ago I was full of idealism. Do you know that 95% of deaf children are born to hearing parents? No. I thought most deaf children come from deaf families. The children of those families born when I was in school were in a real fix. Most of their families did not discover the deafness until it was too late to expect speech beyond a few words. Goodness. That is hard to believe. It is true. I just completed a course about language development. Nowadays hearing loss is detected in the hospital before the baby goes home. Before early detection, the easiest and best option for families was to learn sign language and to become a part of the deaf community. I've heard about the deaf community, but perhaps you can explain to me what it really is. Members of the deaf community communicate using sign language. They see deafness as a difference among human beings rather than a disability. They represent a rich culture, and being deaf does not automatically make one a part of the culture unless they identify themselves as deaf and are guided in their actions by that identity. That must give the deaf a wonderful sense of strength and belonging. It does. One of the greatest experiences of my life has been to become a part of that community. It is lovely group of people that took in all the children and families of children with hearing loss who had no other options. Many members of deaf culture came into it that way. They are intelligent, compassionate and wonderful people. In many ways I am among them. I sign, I run this school that is a center of culture for the deaf community and I see that if I were deaf I would be happy in their shoes. If deafness is detected early now when parents like me want their children to speak using cochlear implants and listening and spoken language intervention and education there must be fewer new students and families entering deaf culture. That is true. More and more families are getting cochlear implants and listening and spoken language intervention and staying in hearing culture. So cochlear implant followed by appropriate listening and spoken language intervention does work for children with severe to profound hearing loss. Yes, and remarkably well for the best candidates like your infant son, according to the course I took. I remember when implants first came out for kids in the 70s and 80s. The results were bad except in a few cases and the researchers tried to convince us that those great results were routine. They were not. I remember fighting against the implants. It all seemed so wrong to offer bad results and struggle instead of the loving embrace the deaf community had to offer. For decades, I fought for children to join the deaf community. But according to my course, most of the children implanted back then would not even be considered good candidates today. Children now are detected early, implants are much better. Listening and spoken language intervention is effective and most children implanted at a year of age go to typical, neighborhood schools. Am I doing a wrong or selfish thing to get an implant for my baby, to want him to speak? It's not selfish. Your child would be like you. Back then it was not possible. Now it is possible and the number of schools like this may shrink. We have lost a lot of students in the last few years. If the school closes, Another cultural center of the deaf community will be lost. It is something that I love. I don't want it to be lost on my watch. But you cannot stop change, or delay it for a generation. Think of all the children who, today have the new opportunity to learn to speak. They will also lose an opportunity to be bilingual you know. That is something special. Yes I can see that. I learned French in my house growing up and have always treasured that. It is a part of me. But I would give it up if it prevented me from speaking to my family. My family and community speak English. Mary, will the deaf community be upset with you if you started sending children like my son away to other places that can help in other ways? I worry about that. I am under a lot of pressure from the district and the culture. We have a pretty strong party line around here. We have not been very good at embracing change. Across the country schools like ours are closing and 85% of parents like you are demanding a new educational system that is based on listening and spoken language with no signs. 
the deaf communities in those areas are furious with the school administrators making changes, even when they come from public demand. I'm beginning to see change is inevitable. I think I can do it but it would be so much easier if I simply had to change things because of some authority above me. It is a country of free choice. It really stands out when choice doesn't exist. Isn't that what the U.S. Individuals with Disabilities Education Act is about? Yes, Sarah. By law, schools are required to provide a free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment that is appropriate to the individual student's needs. Least restrictive environment means that a student who has a disability like hearing loss should always first be considered for placement in his own school district with hearing pairs and have the accommodations he or she needs. According to the law, the student would be placed in a more restrictive environment, such as a special school, only if the nature or severity of his or her disability prevent the student from achieving their goals in a regular education setting. So under federal law children have a right to attend a listening and spoken language intensive program and may attend typical community schools if the child is able. Yes. Whether or not a child goes to a regular school is determined by a committee of persons who work with the child at the IEP meeting. IEP stands for Individual Educational Plan. It is the job of the IEP committee to explain all the options and recommend to the parents what they feel is the best option for their child. The parent, of course, makes the final decision. So my wishes can be overruled by the IEP committee. No, Sarah. The parent is essentially the head of the committee although most don't realize it. You have the right to insist on what you want and it is the job of the experts there to adapt the education plan to those wishes if it is possible. Parents can appeal any recommendation or decision of the EAP committee. It sounds as if you are in a very vulnerable position, Mary. Legally from parents who might discover they have rights to a different form of education, and socially from the deaf community. Exactly. Sometime I feel as though I won't have an ally anywhere. You're in a difficult predicament and any good person could have easily landed there. Thank you, Sarah. I have been trying to visualize the future here and it is really not anything to be afraid of. The deaf community will live on but with decreased numbers. They will still base their cultural center here at the school. The majority of children identified early will be immersed in listening and spoken language intervention from day one and will leave the school to be included in typical neighborhood schools by first grade. We will have a higher percentage of deaf children with or without implants who have disabilities other than hearing loss too. These kids are the toughest because not all kids may flourish with auditory or manual language. So deaf culture and deaf schools will live on and continue to help families who cannot find help. Everyone will get what they want according to their rights as patients, parents and members of cultural communities. Yes, we should work toward that, and I have to help my constituents negotiate change instead of resisting it. I have to Sarah for the children and for you. Thank you Mary.